Hey, what's up, Howls? It's Aloha. Welcome to Culturize. This is the space that we created uh, so we can just talk, share, uh, learn culture, whether it's social, whether it's ethnic, whether it's native. Uh, season seven, I'm kind of excited. That means you don't like me, but you like my guests. And that's what it's all about. So if you're watching on network TV, thank you so much for doing that. If you're watching on all the uh, social platforms, do all the necessary things that validates my existence, like the notification bell, like it, stuff like that. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, thank you very much for doing that. Watch the road. Um, so I'm excited, I'm humbled, I'm privileged. I gotta preempt this episode because um, I love when my friends always, um, they, they request things, right? And say, hey, I know somebody and I, also, I know somebody. I was sent this link about a movie that's coming out, uh, locally produced, uh, internationally well-known, uh, local girls are doing this thing and, and I always get excited for that. Um, the name of the movie before I introduced them was called Lahi. So initially it's like, oh, Hawaiian movie, right? Sounds like a Hawaiian word. Uh, it is, but sounds like it. So I did a little bit more research, got in touch with my friend, says, I know the, I know the, uh, the star. And I said, I want to go deeper. I want to know everybody that's involved in it. And sitting in front of me, my friends, I'm so excited. One of the creators of Lahi, Reina Banta, and the star, Tiki. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for being here. I know you guys are busy. Thank you so much for having us. We're seriously so excited. We couldn't stop talking about it. You, you, know, you flew in from? From Minnesota. Minnes yeah, last night. What was yeah. it, like two degrees right now? Yeah, it's pretty really? cold. Really? It is pretty freezing. And then you yeah. just flew in from Waikiki. Yeah, I flew in right? from Waikiki. <laughs> it, it was funny because we're talking, I don't, I didn't, for some reason I thought you lived on, on Hawaii Island. I, I, anyway, um, we'll talk about that. You guys are sitting in front of me and you, is the movie done? It's done. So it's Finally. been out already. Okay, before we get into the movie, I want to find out a little bit about you guys because what I found out was I, I heard La, he was like, oh, it's a movie. So I did a little bit of research. Filipino. Man, I was like, wait, hold on. There's a Filipino movie. And the more I read into it, I was like, wow, I have to have you guys on the show because of the fact that this is what it's all about. It's focusing on culture, a disconnect once in a while, but how do we get in touch with all of that. First of all, Rena, where'd you grow up? I grew up in California in the Cali Bay Area. Nice, mm -hmm. with all the other Filipinos. <laughs> yeah. Isn't there a lot? Pretty <laughs> vibrant Filipino <laughs> right? community, yes, in like California, Daly City? for sure. Oh yeah, Daly City, <laughs> the whole Bay Area, San Jose, they're you name all, it. They're all up there. I always wonder to myself, wh what was it? What, what Filipino 150 years ago was like, the Bay? <laughs> Let's go to the bay. Right, let's do that. Yeah, I know. Um, of course, whenever we meet Filipinos, uh, we always say, "What kind of Filipino? Uh, Visayan, Tagalog? Uh, what What is your background? Tagalog. Tagalog. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Just all of it, all one hundred percent. Yeah, from from my you know knowledge, my Lola grew up in um, by Silliman University in Dumaguete. How's um, that? She just said Lola, so you know she's Filipino. <laughs> Yeah, my Lola, she's seriously one of my best friends in the world. So she teaches me so much about Filipino culture. I, I love that. Tiki, grew up where? I grew up in Waikiki. Waikiki, what high school you went? <laughs> Online, actually. Nice, yeah. really. So Waikiki, so you basically just surfed every day? Basically, yeah. and ran around and, you know, got Were you the wall rats? And, no. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> no. I was at Queens. Come on. <laughs> I was the hula mound rat, I guess you could no say. Way. Yeah. No way. <laughs> How did this connection happen? Mm. Well, when I had the idea for Lahi, mm -hmm. I was really excited to shoot it locally. I had spent the past year um, before a good part of that year working on the set of Magnum PI as a production assistant. No way. Yeah, and I kind of had an amazing experience and was so welcomed by the, the cast and crew of that production um, and became super close with Tiki's mom um, and had heard such incredible things about Tiki being a pro surfer, being a model and an actress um, and asked her to audition and here we are. No way, okay. Prior to Magnum, have you been to Hawaii before? That was my first significant stay. Yeah, on on Oahu. Yeah, I'd spent some time on Maui before, but okay. Yeah. So that was so you really immersed yourself on that in the Magnum hold. 
So we are sitting with us right now. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Rain and Tiki. We're going to talk about this movie called Lahi. So all my Kababayans, all my Filipino friends, and even non-Filipino friends, we're going to talk. All this is going to make sense to you. We're going to talk about this movie that's out right now starring Tiki, written by Reina Lahi, right here in Culturized. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHAIFING. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HIFICU.com. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome back to Culturized. I am humbled. I'm privileged. I'm sitting here with the creator and the star of this movie called Lahi. Um, I'm really excited. This happened because you were here in Magnum. But before we get to the movie, I always like to find out people's backgrounds because we're talking culture. Uh, Filipino culture growing up on the West Coast. What was that like? In that? Did you grow up very Filipino or, you know, all the stereotypical, the spoon and the fork on the wall, the plaque with all the knives of the, of the different provinces? Um, what, what was the extent of your Filipino culture growing up? Mm, growing up, I would say a lot of my cultural experience was definitely from my Lola and my dad. My Lola is someone who has lived in my house with me in a multi-generational lucky. home. Uh, so That's lucky. That's a very Filipino concept, though. Yes, right? it is. It is. And I feel so lucky, you know, every day. And it's also that she's still around to continue teaching me, even though I've moved away. But um, before she lived with us when I was really young, she lived in Sacramento. Oh, okay. And was part of the KDP, the right. Union of Democratic right. Filipinos. And Not was, a lot of people knew. Yeah. Like we fought, we fought some people back then, right? <laughs> oh yeah, huge activist group, always, you know, something in the works. And I would spend weekends with her in Sacramento going to these events, these galas, what I thought were galas, they're honestly more like community <laughs> organization <laughs> meetings and high school gyms and all of that. But I was so entrenched in the Filipino community there and they were doing anti-martial law work and, and kind of stuff of that nature. So I was really lucky. Outside of that, was, is, can you think of anything within the traditions of Filipino culture in your household? The, the first thing that you, that you connected to, was it music, was it dance, was, was it history, uh, uh, anything having to do with culture? What was it that you connected to first? She taught me a lot of songs and dance growing up. I remember dancing the Thinny Clean. No way. Yeah, yeah, with those bamboo sticks. Had such a great time, did kind you, of. Did you ever do the one, this, I don't know what it's called, the one with the candle in your hand? And you're like, dun, 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 I dun, wish. Dun, dun. I don't think I was coordinated enough for that, <laughs> and she realized that from a young age. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> but tini, so Tinny Kling, so dance was a huge tini thing. Tinny Kling songs, too. Bahai Kubo oh. was my favorite song growing up. <laughs> I have this story of I was at a wedding when I was uh -huh. like five years old. Uh -huh. And they were inviting people to come up and sing karaoke. And I was like, I need to go. So I jumped out of my mom's lap and she was like, I don't want you to go. Like, are you sure this isn't about you? And I was like, mm, it is. <laughs> I love, I and I sang Baha'i Kubo to the entire wedding party, like full on. Which is funny because a lot of people tease and they say it, but every Filipino household has a karaoke machine. <laughs> so you already knew Fully. that. Were you always practicing at home? We sang so much that at home. That is funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so growing up like that, so music and dance was your thing. Tiki, what about for you growing up uh, in, in Waikiki? Um, what is your ethnic background? Hawaiian. Nice. What, who, growing up in Waikiki, and which is, which is almost, it's, it's ironic to think, like a lot of people don't realize, oh, Hawaiians, yeah, they're in Waikiki. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> um, what was it like growing up in Waikiki, knowing that you were Hawaiian, um, but you would just see all these foreigners? growing up did, did you even notice it or that was just that was life it was just life but it was definitely noticeable mm. but you kind of get used to it and you definitely have your disrespectful tourists come around of every course, once in a while of course. but you learn to like adapt to it mostly but it growing up it didn't really bother me as much as i feel like most hawaiians would but that's mm. because i grew up in an environment like that since a young age you just knew would well, you ever find yourself like say you'd be out at, at, at Queens, you ever find yourself instead of getting mad? Because when I first moved to this island, I used to surf out of Waikiki and I would watch people get mad at tourists. I'm like, no, we got to take the advantage of, just let me share something with you, right? Mm -hmm. Don't drop in, don't do this. Go surf at canoes, yes. <laughs> right? Do you do that or are you just one of those, hey, what are you doing? 
I'm not so much the tell them what to do. <laughs> I let the uncles uh, <laughs> do that and my dad, who very much is the go to canoes. We try to do it respectfully at first, I but if that. they don't listen as much, then it's kind of a, a situation. Right. <laughs> it's could a, say. <laughs> come on now. Hey, if you're joining us, this is Culturize. I'm sitting down with uh, the stars and the writers, the creators of Lahi, this a movie about Filipino culture that we're going to get into. So I just want to find out who they were and what it's like growing up in their culture. Uh, so if you want to share anything with us, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, comment down below. You got any ideas, any questions about the Filipino culture, or maybe you were in that position where you felt a little bit disconnected uh, from your own culture. Let us know what that's about right here in Culturize. Air and Sea Travel Center, best group tours throughout the world. Let's go travel and see the world to make beautiful memories. Call 808-951-9800 today. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii, providing your family with their local favorites and accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy. Make Long's a part of your day. Windows Hawaii. Trust Windows Hawaii. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome back to Culturize. My name is Makani. We're sitting down talking Filipino culture about this movie, Lahi. Uh, we have to say, Komo kayo to our, our kababayans, <laughs> right? So sitting down, Reina and Tiki, we're, t Tiki, we're talking about growing up in Waikiki. Um, was, there, was there a lot of culture in the household? There was yeah. a lot of finger dipping in the poi and talking about hula, and you know. What was one of the first things that you remember that you peeled to, that you connected to first? Was it surfing? Was it hula? Was it, what was it? Surfing. Nice. Surfing has been in my life for as long as I can remember. First place you surfed. Was Waikiki? it Waikiki? <laughs> was no, it Waikiki? Where in Waikiki? Um, baby Queens on nice. the front of my dad's tandem board. Oh, I love that. You <laughs> see that? And, and that's, that's where culture happens. Um, so my next question is just talking about how you're sitting on the front of dad's board, right? A lot of cultures, two ways we learn, either dad or Lola takes you and says, hey, this is how we do things, or you just observe what they're doing. Was it both, or what, what were you guys learning? Were you ob observ observation learners, or actually had to show learners? What was it for you? Mm, I think we did a lot of things together, mm, very active. Nice. I remember the way she taught me to count in Tagalog was she would, <laughs> bury in the sand these like uh -huh. rubber bands and she'd have me dig them out with a stick and wow. everyone that I dug out was a new number yeah that's crazy yeah what about for you I was definitely more of the active, active. process I was always doing it with my dad right it's, it's always you're, you're sitting on the front of you and you just you already knew okay dad didn't drop in on somebody okay he's gonna paddle this <laughs> he's gonna paddle that. I love that I was now, too young to even be thinking he dropped in on somebody <laughs> right? it's like, I was on the shoulders it's like he it's like how come nobody goes when he goes <laughs> right that's that's how it was oh he's going take it off um so now we we learn a bit a little bit about you guys growing up I want to talk about this movie Lahi um, is it fair to say it's a movie about disconnecting and reconnecting with culture yeah super fair I think that's at the heart of it um what was what was the thought process behind it when did you think about it and why mm. I was really inspired by the fact that I'm so grateful that my Lola is still around. Um, I'm a third generation Filipino American and she has lived through these incredible moments in Filipino history, has been an incredible activist that's been monumental to some movements. And um, I just kind of started interviewing her about her life um, because I wanted this archival record of her story for our family for the future. And so I can be, be the one to teach future generations um, later down the line. So it kind of started just by listening. I like that. Yeah. You have brothers and sisters? I do. Cousins. So are are you are you the chosen one meeting, <laughs> right? Because you you like you just said I love the fact that you become the and I talked about it earlier with a lot of uh, guests but you become the keeper, the official keeper of your family's knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Um, do you do you see that as a huge responsibility? I think responsibility is a good word, but I don't think it has a negative connotation to right. it. I think it's something I'm so proud to have like as that. a responsibility. I like that. So you just and then you're like, I got I got to you, you put your thoughts to paper mm -hmm. right? and you create how long how long was that process of creating Lahi? Mm. It has been such a journey. Tiki knows um, okay. writing it was honestly on the quicker side. I had so many ideas and an incredible co-writer who who was able to kind of help me bring out those family stories and put them on paper. But I think that writing process took about four or five months. 
Um, and then we shot kind of a few months after that. And the process on the whole has taken, at this point, two years. Wow. Um, which is in- incredible mm-hmm. for a short film, really. Just so much, you know, effort every single day out of love is going into this project. And, and now we're here. How much of, and it may sound like a weird question, how much of you is in this film? Mm. Or is it all of you? Or were you thinking, there's other Filipinos like me, there's other people out there that I want them to connect to, but or is it more just you? This is, this is my experience. I mean, I think I didn't want to take a selfish approach to this mm. film and wanted to make it universal, universal and relatable. Uh, so incorporated a lot of my experiences, because I think naturally as a writer, you write what you know. Mm. Um, but was really intentional to make it something that could be um, relatable to other people watching, other third-generation Filipino-Americans, other people wanting to engage with their culture at a later age who have felt disconnected like I have in the past. So, yeah, I think it was a lot, you know, about me and my story and my Lola story for sure, but always had an eye towards the universal experience. That I, I love that. It, it, if you're joining us, this is Culture Eyes. We're sitting with the star of uh, Lahi, the writer, the creator. Uh, I know we're sitting with the star, but I also want to talk about another character that you hired to play in this movie, which we've been talking about. If you're Filipino, if you're non-Filipino, but you have a disconnect, you want to learn, what can I do to reconnect to my culture? That's what we do right here at Culture Eyes. At Aloha Kia, you know a guy. Visit them at any of their seven dealerships statewide. Purchase a brand new Kia using Aloha Kia Express. Learn more at alohakia.com. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome back to Culturize. We're talking about this amazing movie that's out right now. It's called Lahi. Um, and it, it is about, it, it's Filipino, it, a contemporary Filipino experience uh, written by Reina and your experiences. And there's a lot of other people out there, whether you're Filipino or not. We, sometimes we have this reconnect. Um, sitting with the star, what was it like um, when when you got the role? Of course, there's this connection with, with you, Raina, and, and mom, but um, now you're representing culture. Um, unlike any other projects that you've done, uh, what was what was the mindset going into it? Now you're like, okay, I got to get in. I got to be this Filipino girl. I got to be the one who who has to reconnect. What, what was that like? My first, in this, my first initial thought was definitely shocked that I got the role in the first place. <laughs> nice. But um, I know some people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, definitely going into it, I wanted to really do it well and make the Filipino community proud and like feel like they can also connect to this story as well as Reina and her Lola did. And because it is their story and I am telling it in Reina's eyes. So I really wanted to come off of it as respectful and like mm. trying to play it out as well as she thought she could see it for him because it's, it's it's I mean I would this is close to home right this yeah. is this is like was there pressure knowing that a part of the movie is her and her Lola and now you have to somehow be her and have it come across on screen uh, were you familiar with a lot of Filipino culture at the time I knew very little. I think going into this, I did a lot of research in my own time and kind of being on set with Reina and learning a few things from her Lola, I kind of got to like experience and learn more throughout myself. So you got to actually hang out with Lola too then. I did. She's amazing. I always say if you have a chance to hang out with your grandparents on a regular basis, you have to, right? They've lived the lives that we need the answers to, right? Um... Now, I want to talk about that. You hanging out with Lola because one of the other stars of the show was Lola. Did you make her audition? (laughs) (laughs) I should have. Wouldn't that that have been so fun? It's like, this is my turn to be over you. (laughs) What did you, how, what was that like? Did you, did you already just know I got to have her in there or was it like, you're right there. Mm, I think it kind of came to me slowly, but mm. once I knew, I knew. And there was no other person that could play that role. Was, here's another weird, was she acting as her? Or was she acting as somebody's other Lola? So she kind of, she's acting as herself. Okay. Uh, and kind of is this apparition character um, who doesn't really have many spoken lines. She's just kind of this benevolent uh, ghost figure who's guiding our main character. 
Um, but I think one of my favorite memories with her on set was like the first day she showed up. We were shooting at Hawaii's Plantation Village yeah. and she we have a safety meeting every right. morning uh, to just kind of talk about the day. And she, I finish up and I'm like, okay, anyone else have anything to add? And she's like, I do. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, what do, what do we have to say? <laughs> and she goes on this speech. Of course, I should have expected it. Mm -hmm. And she talks about actually something that I'll always remember, which is her father was a theater director who always wanted her to act um, and had written her into some projects. And she just thought it was so heartwarming that now her granddaughter no was way. directing her and the story was about Filipino heritage and culture. So it was a really, really sweet thing to say, but of course, totally something she would do of just pulling everyone aside and having her moment. It's like, <laughs> I know we're on a time schedule, but you just say whatever you gotta say. Union exactly. guys, you can go, right? Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna catch up on the extended version on YouTube. So if you're watching on, on network, thank you very much for doing that. We're gonna continue to talk with Reina and Tiki. But before that, I just want to let you guys know that all this is for you guys. We th no this way. we got I gotta thank Island Craft Fairs and all of their vendors like Ho Hawaii Freeze Treats. Um, who else we got inside? We got Mandy's Munchies. Are you guys are you guys sweets people? Oh yeah, perfect. Uh -huh. Mandy's Munchies. We've <laughs> no got way. my Sweet World 808. We've got uh, Chili Pepper Water. We got all kinds of stuff <gasps> in your Ugly Six. All for you Dude, guys. You're lying. I'm not lying. Thank you guys so much. Hit, go over to the extended version right now on YouTube because we're gonna continue to talk about this unbelievable movie about Filipino culture. <laughs> lying. <laughs> Hey, what's up, how's it? Aloha, welcome back to Culturize. This is the extended version. This is where we get to even, to, we get to learn all the Filipino swear words. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you guys know swear words? <laughs> I don't know. We learned a fair few on set for sure. Uh, well, if you're joining us, uh, thank you very much. We are sitting with the creator of the movie Lahi and the star of the movie Lahi. And uh, we are talking about, it's, it's a, it, I love it because it's a movie about culture. Filipino culture specifically, but I think any other culture, any native culture, any ethnic culture, even social cultures can learn from this uh, this movie that, that what do you do when you're disconnected? How do you reconnect? Um, I want to get right into to one part of the movie, the, the um, dishes, mm. right? Um, it's it's funny when I, when I saw that and you guys talked about it and I was like, I guess that is a Filipino thing right it's my grandparents all the time in their in their kitchen you had one cabinet <laughs> for, the, for these type of uh, uh dishes and, and plates and whatnot the other one for the daily use one tell our, our our friends watching what that whole concept is about and what, what why was that in the movie because a lot of people are like dishes yeah. what, is that, what is that about totally right? I mean, these dishes have such a story to them. And I think just generally, you're so right. Dishes have this, these connotations of culture and sharing and food, which are also central to Filipino-ness. Mm -hmm. um, but these dishes, the story in, in the film is that Mimi, Tiki, kind of comes across this family heirloom, these dishes that are addressed to a family friend and has to deliver them. And in doing so, kind of goes on this journey of cultural reconnection. And the dishes in real life are inspired by the very true story of my Lola and when she was living in the Philippines in Los Baños during uh, the tail end of World War II, her home was burned to the ground um, and her family had to flee into the mountains to survive. And her mother was so obsessed and in love with these plates. Obviously, they had so much history with their family, so much culture. Um, that she decided to bury them in front of their house and even built or, or planted some, some plants on top of them so that people right. wouldn't think to, to right. dig it up. So they were kind of the symbol of hope and optimism. And, you know, if we make it back, we'll, we'll get our plates back. And they survived, and, and they did. The, the plates no survived. Way. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. So, that, that, so you took life mm. and put that into film, um, what was that when you heard that part of the story? Uh, see, because what initially what I thought just now is like you're gonna have to have a Hawaiian version where Dad passes on the surfboard, right? Yeah. And it could, because you know, <laughs> if somebody gives you a board or anything like that, this I don't even any culture, you're like there's a huge responsibility, not only to that. Like I remember getting in trouble because um, uh, 
I don't know if, uh, Tommy Tanaka, great, great shaper, right? He, he gave me one of his boards, um, not uh, Ernie, the, the brother. And it was like, I didn't even want to use it, right? And then I got in trouble. It's like, what, why is it sitting there? <laughs> I was like, it's like, it's this thing that you, don't, you only use. You, he's like, well, you don't display a surfboard. <laughs> I, I totally like, get what you mean. Right? You don't want to wax the that's perfectly what I polished mean. board. So that's, it's like these plates. It's just, to, it, it's funny because it's like you just said, there's so much story to it. What was, so in the movie and in real life, when these plates were found, what, what did they have to do with it? When the plates a, were found yeah. in real life. Yeah. They just became this, this part of the family that, you know, survived for a long time and, got lost along the way so we didn't end up using the real plates mm -hmm. for the movie but i just think that story is something that's so special to our family history that we had to kind of memorialize it in some way i like that concept but it in the movie you the there's you're returning it to somebody isn't that the thing yes um what is and is that how the connect the whole movie started or what, what is that yeah you want to talk yeah, about that no. yeah um the journey basically is returning these plates that a note was left mm -hmm. on them to go and return it to its owner or it's wow. a person that she wow. was handing it towards. And throughout this journey of going, you know, person to person, trying to find the connected source ah. is like she kind of reconnects herself through this journey of returning the plates. I see it. I see that you read along the way you're meeting people you're trying to find now that the name of the lady that you returned um started with a g what gabriella, was gabriella. Yeah. so you're looking for gabriella to give these plates to but along the way you're you're reconnecting with culture that's brilliant <laughs> um because we don't think about little things like that right we always think to pass on knowledge or pass on any culture it's got to be this profound thing although the plates were profound but to a lot of other people just but you found these plates. They're every day yeah, yeah. That's right mm -hmm. and and but as we know in in many cultures like you said and it's that's a funny joke but we used to tease i used to tell my grandparents um oh so those people aren't important so don't use those plates <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you can see right? who's you can respected see who's yeah <laughs> who's special guest exactly hey so and so's <laughs> coming over just use paper plates <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? oh. isn't that the yeah. thing mm -hmm. and, and so much we can learn that's what i'm thinking so much we can learn just by plates yeah right yeah um now the movie was completed and it is it on tour right now where can we where can we see it where can is it coming up in hawaii where has it been yeah you guys were just in oregon yeah just in oregon so we the film's done and we're on our film festival circuit right nice. now we premiered at portland film mm. festival and we just won the audience award at san diego filipino film festival and that one was so special because it was a filipino festival and experience to be supported by by those folks was really special let me ask you this um how how has it been because right now could we i think right now Filipino culture is cool. Everybody, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. you notice how just within society, we're all looking to be somebody, right? At one time, everybody wants to be black. Everybody wants to be Samoan. Now everybody wants, you know, Joe Coy. Everybody's coming out, right? Filipinos, are, and they don't realize there's a lot of us. There's a lot yeah. of us. What was reviews like so far? Or do you even pay attention to reviews? I mean, just I think my favorite experiences at these film festivals is when someone who's third generation like me comes up and is like, I see so many Filipino films that I have a hard time connecting with. They're spoken in a dialect that I don't understand about a culture in the Philippines that I don't necessarily know. But this film is relatable um, and can spark something in them, which I think is one of the most special parts about it. You found that happy medium because I like that you said it because a few seasons ago, um, and I talked about it earlier, we had a, um, a professor of Filipino studies from University of Hawaii, and we were talking story, and he said, he said there's, there's, a, there's differences with, you know, you go to the continent of the U.S., West Coast Filipinos, East Coast Filipinos, even different from Hawaii Filipinos and um, Philippine Filipinos. Mm -hmm. um, and you figured out you have a project that all of them are like, man, mm -hmm. that's who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever get elders that come up? Yeah. And, and even for you, do you ever, 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 do they question you? Oh, because you know how some people, oh, are you Filipino? 
right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you get people like that? Yeah. I get people like that all the time on culture. All Culturist. the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. And I think especially because I'm mixed, I'm Puerto Rican and Filipino, I think sometimes I don't look immediately, you know, Filipino to some. So I get those questions. But I think the most funny ones are when Filipino elders are like, I think you should make a film about this next. <laughs> They're always see? giving the recommendations. Were we, were we just talking about that? Even with this show, people call and it's like, no, I think you should do this. <laughs> yeah. And who are you They always have an this? opinion. I'm like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so you are not officially Filipino. No, <laughs> right? I'm Hawaiian. No, but meaning like after this movie, people are going to be like, hey, that's the Filipino girl. <laughs> right? Have you yeah. gotten that so far? Because that's what I was thinking. It's like, I, I know your background is Hawaiian, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be weird. People are going to hey, that's the Filipino girl. Because you know how it is. And I think that's a good thing because of the fact that you know if somebody says it asks you the question oh you filipino it's because they watched you and you know that's a good quantifier that it came across the screen mm-hmm. right it's like wow she is me mimi is me um i think that's amazing what you guys are doing um you gotta where where is it coming to hawaii where is it going to be in hawaii yeah, it's going to be at the Hawaii International Film Festival screening on November 4th. Okay. It has sold out twice, which is wild, beyond our wildest dreams. Nice. Um, but you can watch it virtually. All right, so uh, if uh, you're watching uh, on YouTube, uh, Hawaii uh, Film Festival, but after that, um, can we get it anywhere else? I mean, yeah, you guys are just going to push it and push it and push it? Yeah, so we have a festival circuit that will continue nice. after after HIF, okay, but cool. in 2023, after our festival circuit is done, we have a streaming deal with uh, Electric Now nice. out of Electric Entertainment, so you can watch that for as many times as you want. I like it. Yeah. Watch it a lot and share it. Um, you guys, <laughs> mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat yeah, po, salamat po. Uh, for making time um, from surfing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Was there waves this morning? I don't know. I woke up so early. <laughs> yeah, I know. You were like, I woke up so early for this. I got to no, be there at 1130. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. You're not the Don Patrol surfer. Um, every once in a while, yeah. you, it really takes persuasion to do that for me. But. I know, right? Another morning person. <laughs> uh, but seriously, thank you guys, Raina, for amazing that you that you wrote this this project and you, you put it on, on film and the continued success. I mean, I think we need a lot more culturally based movies and films and TV shows and all this because we, we, we're, we're, in a, we're in a time, I think, everybody's realizing, this is just my opinion, we realize we're different, which is great, but I think this pride kicks in where we start to think, I'm great, but I'm greater than you. Right, and I think that's a bad thing. It's like, no, let's just all be great together. So continued success, continued success, Tiki, and everything that you get. What do you got coming up? You got anything else coming up? Well, Tons. I have, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, I definitely have the film festival uh-huh. coming up, which I'm super excited for. A bunch okay. of friends and family are going to be joining us to watch it, which is a little nerve wracking in a sort. But other than that, I'm super excited for that. So. Can anybody, I don't know if you guys want them to follow you, but uh, you guys got the socials. What's your social? <laughs> if you, Tiki Willis. Tiki Willis. Raina Bonta. We're All nice right. and easy. Yeah, I know, know, right? It's not it's like sur- surfer girl yeah. queen. Yeah. Right? Tiki <laughs> and girl 808. Yeah. Tiki girl 808. And you can follow the film uh, yeah. at Lahi Short Film Lahi on Instagram. Lahi Short Film. Remember Lahi Short Film. You guys want to go see this. Um, I'm telling you right now, I'm biased. Everything that has to do with culture, I love. We got to push it. We got to share it. Uh, if you got any comments, comment down below. You want to learn more about the Filipino culture or... Uh, that's what I want to leave with. If you could encourage any Hawaiians out there right now that, that, are, that are feeling disconnected, um, what would you say to them? Because, you know, sometimes we have this pride thing, ah, no, I don't want to learn, blah, blah, blah. what would you say to them to, get, to reconnect to their culture? I mean, if they are feeling in a sense that they do want to reconnect, mm-hmm. I would say be present in your culture Ooh. and really learn. Like and be that. And, like, be in the core of where you believe your culture is mostly shared be present i like because a lot of us aren't yeah, we we're are. like this yeah like it's, this, it's right? always <laughs> neck <laughs> down you it's know like, on the phone i'm waiting for the day i see somebody in the lineup like that oh <laughs> I on the just, phone yeah i mean you know nowadays people are smoking in the lineup <laughs> well nowadays in waikiki you see like the girls no, well, that's on what their I surfboards mean. that's like, exactly it out there taking pictures so the fact that you say be present i love that be present 
in culture. What would you say to anybody that's that's feels a disconnection and wants to wants to be you and Lola and needs to do that again? How would you what would you encourage people? I mean, I love your answer, Tiki. I think it's so on the head. And I think that's one of the reasons you are so perfect for this project is because you've had that journey, too, of moving to California for acting and then and then coming back and having to reconnect with the Hawaiian side. So I echo all of that um, and would add also uh, to listen, to have big ears and to get close with your grandparents. If they're still around, you're so lucky. Um, if you have elders in your family or in your community, interview them um, and just be present and, and active listeners. I like that. So I my takeaway is always be proud and never forget your people, your culture, and your land. This is Culturized. Thank you guys for being here. Comment, do all the things, validate my existence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>